This is a colour-changing fibre optic LED lamp. Now, I've had one of these before, and the previous one had a single 1 watt LED in it. This one actually has a cluster of four LEDs in the end that are just going to swap out the camera big time. And unfortunately, three of them are the smooth colour-changing ones, and one of them is the hideous flashing colour-changing one. So um, let's uh, see if we can make this better. So here's the culprit. I'm just going to turn the soldering iron on so it's ready for us to make this modification. It's got the three LEDs, it's got that horrible flashing one. I'm just going to put a black dot with a Sharpie on the end of the flashing one because I want to mark it so I can remove it. Because it's hideous. And then we shall take out the lamp holder. In fact, I'll just remove that lamp holder out of the way completely. It draws, well, the meter isn't going to read too accurately. It draws about half a watt. Um, now, this one that I've already taken apart in the past, which looks compatible, actually, uh, has a one watt red LED and runs it at roughly one watt with a little switching power supply. But this one has four ordinary LEDs and it just clocks up at that half watt. I'm not 100% sure. I'm guessing it's probably just going to be a capacitive dropper in here. Ooh. And it's clipped on very well. Okay, there's a little circuit board hot melt glue. That's slightly annoying because I'm going to have to unhot melt glue it. There's the LED we don't want. Uh, this is obviously designed to have multiple functions. I think these are little wire ports. Yeah. But it looks as though that's actually been mounted upside down. Oh, let's take a look. Let's see if I can impale myself. I've not done it yet, really. But there's still plenty of time. Okay. Oh, I've just pulled a wire out. Not to worry. It actually it has that squareness that it looks... Or is that a capacitor? Let's cut this open. In fact, let's uh, desolder that wire from the back. I think that's solder. Maybe it's not solder. Maybe that's. Uh, maybe I'm doing the wrong thing here. Oh, I think that may just be one of those little skewer things that pops in the little thing that jams the wire in. Yes, it is. Okay, so let's clip this open. A pair of snips. I'm thinking, yes, it is just a capacitive dropper. I might have to sleeve this afterwards then. Probably sniffing through half the components as I speak. Okay. Oh, it's got a little zener as well. That's unusual. So, yep, capacitive dropper. Does it have a discharge resistor? Yes, it does. So I can, yeah, it's discharged now. Uh, 470 nano is quite high, actually. I wonder what sort of current it's driving those LEDs at. Let's uh, find out, shall we? By right, bridging one of them. So I'll bring in the tester. The quick test. I'll mention that because uh, everybody keeps asking what it is. And let's uh, cover this up. And then I'll bridge, actually I'm going to have to take that circuit board off, I'm to, to bridge out an LED. Is that going to go through that hole? No. It's so close but it doesn't. Right here. Now, I do have colour changing LEDs but not the focused ones, which is a bit annoying. Because the other, all the other ones are focused. I don't know how that's going to affect the fibre optic display. I don't know if it's going to be as bright because it's not directed onto the end. So I'm just going to stuff this wire in here and this wire in here. And then that's now lit. I'm going to get a meter. Let's put this to 200 milliamps just in case. Oh, let's, uh, yeah, it's DC, what am I talking about? Uh, and I'm going to carefully bridge across here without zapping myself. Maybe. Well, this could be quite tricky. Oh, it's running them pretty hard. It's running about 30 milliamps. That's quite ferocious. But then again, there's multiple chips in each. 
Oh, not so sure about that. That's really run them quite hard. Okay, switch it back for amps. Don't want to leave it in amps because uh, that leads to little nasty instances when you stick it across voltage. This meter should be well protected, though it is category four. So let's uh, remove the rogue LED that I don't want. So I'm going to use my usual technique. I'm going to use a bit of silicon tubing and I'm just going to jam it over the end of the LED. Melt the solder joint while pulling this said bit of silicon tubing, and that's the LED out. Then clean up those pads with a fresh bit of solder. I do notice that the LEDs, because uh, the flashing LEDs tend to have the colour chips mounted on, they're not dead centre, and they tend to sort of fire out a bit of an angle. I wonder if it would actually benefit from the type of LED I've got, because it's a, a flat-end LED. I should actually have looped that LED out before I did this. Have I just misplaced that? I probably have, not to worry. I shall find it. Uh, desoldering wick. I have desoldering wick. I'm not very organised tonight, am I? There it is. You guys will inevitably ask why I use desoldering wick instead of the uh, desoldering pump. And occasionally I do use the desoldering pump and I have a full on. Um, vacuum desoldering tool as well, with the sort of motorised pump inside it. But this is quite handy just for mopping up small joints quite quickly. When you can hold them straight. This is also unusually thin, this uh, wick. It's not the thickest. I'm not sure why I ended up getting this stuff. Right here. Now, LED. Where did I put that? I did have those LEDs looked out and then I, then I sort of tied them away again and... Yeah, that, that wasn't very clever. Uh, one moment, please. Right, so instead of the rounded end one, I've actually got a flat top one, which uh, spreads the light much better, but the question is, will it focus it properly on the end of those uh, fibres? I, I could theoretically uh, lift it up so the... Uh, tip of the thing is closer to the bunch of fibres, that might actually not be a bad idea. So I'll, initially I'll press them down like this, so they form a little cluster sitting on the table, and I shall solder one of the solder pot joints. Maybe I'll just uh, do it like I usually do. It's better. So I shall just solder that joint, noting that the LED isn't quite square yet, but I'll then adjust it afterwards. Okay, dokie. Now I shall just swing that LED over into alignment with the others, and solder the other joint. Now I'm going to have to find some heat shrink to put over the uh, power supply again and get it back into its base. And I'm also going to have to glue this back in. I'll just uh, remelt the glue with the, with my hot air pen. So um, I'm just going to put some sleeving over that now, and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, the heat shrink has been applied. It's been reconnected in here, so I just need to stuff this back in. Now I'm not so sure about the zener because if the zener, uh, if the power, I suppose it's only about uh, 12 or so volts across that. But if the zener, depending on the uh, voltage rating, if this, the LEDs did go open circuit, that could get quite hot. Then again, it stands fairly proud on the circuit board, so it's not that bad. So I'm just going to stuff that in there and stuff this. Oh, actually, this uh, aligns with little indentations, so I'll get that right. Oh, maybe I won't get it right. There we go. And I'll put this cover on as well. And it too has little... Uh, bits that slot into the housing to keep it square. There we go. And then the fibres go in. And I'll screw into this adapter. And I'll just uh, change the exposure setting just so you guys can actually uh, see what this looks like. Okay, that is much better. 
it's not doing that horrible pulsating thing. It's uh, it's actually surprisingly good. This came squished flat in a packet, and as soon as it was taken out of the packet, it bounced out. It seems very seems to hold its shape very well. I have noticed that one of the LEDs, one of its colours, is flickering. It's got a dodgy chip in it, I think, LED chip. I'm not 100% sure. But um, other than that, uh, it's actually it's uh, looking a lot better now that it's not doing that flashing, strobing thing. The colours do sort of morph around the tree a little bit. It's, uh, it's actually quite good. It does have that shimmer, though, that every so often I think that is, that is definitely a duff LED chip. Yeah, maybe I'll end up swapping all these LEDs. But uh, so far, so good. That That's a big improvement. Needless to say, I did end up swapping all the LEDs. Now it just morphs continually and very slowly around that colour uh, without any flicker. It's, it's actually quite nice, actually. Nice, just a sort of, just a, a decorative standalone item. It's surprising that the actual zones of colour actually blend quite well and there's a sort of good morphing effect. Yeah, that's not too bad at all. Much, much better than, than it was.